Hello and welcome back and so this is going to be video number three. This is all about clothing um, including shoes and socks, mittens, buffs, all that kind of accessory type of uh, item. Disclaimer up front. I am a cold person. I just get cold very easily. So what I am going to show that I use on the AT probably is going to be excessive to half the people on the trail. Um, I also, um, I said in another video, I'm the 10 essentials girl. I always have an extra layer just in case. I always have an extra pair of socks or whatever, just in case. So I also brought that theory into my clothing. Um, I wanted, if, if I, if it's a long stretch of being cold and wet and I'm out there for five or six days, I thought it was a good idea, not just for comfort, but also for potentially safety to, to be hiking with the option of being able to have two tops and two bottoms that are your hiking clothes. And then you have a top and a bottom that is your sleeping clothes. And that never is worn for hiking. And your hiking clothes are never slept in, although I will admit I slept occasionally in my hiking clothes, um, but never hiked in my sleeping clothes ever. Um, I think it's important to, especially when it's cold and wet, to always have something dry to change into at the end of the day. So that's your sleeping clothes. Always keep them dry, have something warm. Um, and if you're out there for two, three, four, five, six days, um, especially the longer end of that spectrum, you're out there for five or six days, um, like in the Smokies, you may be out there for five or six days, or you just, you have a stretch that's, you know, there aren't road crossings, a hundred mile wilderness, five or six days, you know, things like that, where you're wet and it's cold and it's been raining to have that second set of clothing to change into. Um, I'll explain that a little bit more as I get into it, but it's not, it's, it's not even just the comfort. I cannot tell you how many times on trail it would be that, you know, third or fourth morning. And I've been wearing the same stinky, dirty, nasty clothes for three days in a row. It's the fourth morning. I got at least two, maybe three more days out there before we're getting off and getting into a hostel or a hotel. And the just relief, the, ah, oh, of putting on fresh clean pants and a fresh clean top and it's not wet and it's not smelly mental things so to me it was worth the extra carry so stan and i we didn't argue like you know argue argue but you know we'd have our back and forth about it, it was that he was like you know you could get rid of some weight in your pack if you'd send home some of your clothes and i'm like no I'm not sending home my clothes. Like I'm going to have my two pairs of hiking clothes. I'm going to have my sleeping clothes and I'm going to have my accessories and things that I need. So, you know, maybe I carried some extra weight in my clothes. I did for, you know, some of the, especially the Graham counters, but I'm going to tell you what I did. You don't have to do what I did, but I made it from Georgia to Maine and this is what I did. All right. So I'm going to start with shoes. Um, I changed my shoes during the hike. Um, I have very weak ankles and I'm not just the person who's saying, oh, I have weak ankles. So I need some ankle support because there's some people out there who are just like, I am used to wearing boots and that's going to be my excuse. No, I really do have weak ankles. Ask Stan. I trip, I fall, I stumble, I roll my ankle all the freaking time, all the time. Cannot believe I made it from Georgia to Maine without an ankle injury. I really thought I was going to have one. I didn't. Unbelievable. Um, so I wear boots and I started with the Columbia boots that I've been wearing for hiking for years. Um, Long story short, I had some foot, foot issues, went in to see a foot guru uh, about 100 miles in in Franklin, North Carolina at Outdoor 76, and um, I switched. I needed to be wearing men's shoes because I have really wide feet, and the wide width in women's shoes aren't wide enough for my feet. Men's shoes are naturally wider, and then the wide width in men's gives me that extra room for when my feet swell during hiking and all that kind of stuff. So I switched to men's shoes and to the brand La Sportiva. Can you see that says La Sportiva on that? La Sportiva. Um, <laughs> the shoes that I bought initially with the La Sportiva, um, La Sportiva stopped making about halfway through my hike. Um, they replaced them with an, a different, very, very similar. I did all the research. They're practically the same shoe, just styled differently. Um, so I can't even remember what the name of it is. I'll have to find it. Um, but yeah, so I wore these La Sportivas the whole rest of the hike. To Maine, I went through, not including the Columbias that I started with, I went through four pairs of La Sportivas. These are lightweight hiking boots slash trail runners. They are sturdier and have the ankle support of an actual boot, but they are a cross between a trail runner and a boot. So they are lighter weight and they, they really do dry fast and they're really not that heavy. Like people, I had people like, oh my God, you're wearing boots and then they pick them up and they'd be like, they weigh the same as my Hoka's or whatever. So um, they, yeah, they worked really well for me. I love them. 
All right, that's my shoes. So along with shoes are gaiters. Most people by far, you see out on the trail, people are wearing the dirty girl gaiters. Um, I didn't get the dirty girls in the beginning, especially because I thought that you had to have that little clippy in the front and some sort of way to connect it in the back. Um, and then I found out that when you buy the dirty girl gaiters, they give you the um, Velcro that you need for it to snap onto the back and then you can just hook it onto your shoelaces on the front. You don't have to have the spiffy little hook that some brands of shoes have now. Um, so anyway, I did buy Dirty Girls at the very end. I still have never used them. Uh, I had like, I was literally was in Monson with 100 miles left and I just bought them. Um, the rest of the hike, I am deathly allergic to poison ivy, which I got anyway. Um, and I was afraid of ticks and snakes and like all those other things. Um, mostly for the poison ivy though, really, I wore um, calf length gaiters and I wore this brand, um, Outdoor Research. I wore them in black until I couldn't buy them in black and uh, got this, you know, camo green. Um, these cinch around your calf and hook onto the front of your shoe and then this goes underneath your shoe and straps onto the other side. Um, these worked great. My first pair lasted 700 miles, my second pair lasted almost 700 miles, and then these, I was in New Hampshire I think when I got these and they lasted like 30 miles. <laughs> Yeah, the rocks destroyed them. So I stopped wearing them through New Hampshire and Maine because I was like, no matter what I buy, it, like the rocks are just going to destroy them. Um, so yeah, and I wasn't real worried about poison ivy anymore at that point. And I wore pants the whole time, the whole time from Georgia to Maine. I never wore shorts hiking ever. Um, I just, poison ivy, ticks, snakes, like I just, I, I wore pants the whole time. Me. Um, okay, simple thing, my hat. I kind of like I'm well known for this particular hat now, which is kind of weird because people like recognize me when I wear it. Um, but it's kind of cool too. Um, I love, the, there's all kinds of stores. You don't have to buy the Christian one. Um, if you like this, faithshirts.com is where I got it and they have a bunch of different styles. But what I want to point out for you ladies is this back. So I liked being able to put my ponytail up high. It got my hair off of my neck for the most part and was cute. Um, or you can have it as a low ponytail or whatever you want to do. So I like that. I also like the mesh. So it didn't matter if it got wet. Um, and it dried really fast. I was also able to throw this in the washer and dryer, get the smell out because yeah, just everything else gets hiker funk like everything. Um, so highly recommend a hat. Um, blocks the sun, blocks the rain, blocks the bugs a little bit. Um, I got a bug net that was made to go over a hat. So it had an extra little spot for the bill to hang over your head. Also kept that bug net a little bit degree of separation from your face. So highly recommend getting a hat. I just think you should. Let's talk buffs. <laughs> wound up with so many buffs on trail. Okay, so I left with this buff. This is a lightweight, very lightweight um, merino wool buff that I had had already. I used it in hiking. Um, I like to use buffs. I wear them around my neck. I like to use them if I'm not pulling them up over my head. Um, I can use that as a tick barrier or a sweat barrier or to, like mostly when I'm doing that I'm helping to keep my ears and like face warm. Uh, the rest of the time I have it around my, around my neck and it's my sweat cloth. Um, it also collects sweat to keep it from dripping because I sweat a lot. I'm just, I'm one of those. Yeah, yeah, I'm gross. I sweat a lot. So anyway, this I had from beginning to end in my pack with me. Um, this I got in Georgia at Outdoor 76, just like all the other through hikers. So you probably have seen us wearing these in our vlogs. Um, so the official Outdoor 76 Appalachian Show through hike uh, wore this a lot too. Um, not sure what it's made out of. I don't think it's merino wool. I think it's some sort of poly blend. Um, cause it's, it smells pretty easily. So I usually would only wear this for like a day or two and then I couldn't stand the smell anymore. Um, okay. Last. Oh, I also was gifted. Nikki, if you ever watch this, I was gifted for my birthday, the buff brand AT. There's an AT, um, buff that has the logo on it and stuff. And I was gifted that for my birthday on trail and I wore it all the way to Maine and then lost it at a hostel. I'm going to say lost because it was on my nightstand and then it wasn't. Yeah. So that made me sad. Um, I did not have all of these buffs with me all the time either, by the way. Um, I sent some home and then had some sent back to me, uh, like when I lost the AT buff. This is a winter buff I only had with me in the winter. I sent it home when it started getting warmer. Um, this is the buff brand. It's called a Polar Fleece buff. This part of it is thicker and then it has a fleece liner. This saved me, saved me, especially in the Smokies. Like my six days in the Smokies, it wasn't until the last day that it got above 20 degrees. 
um, several days. It was in the teens and overnights, like single digits. So I was wearing this sleeping. I was wearing this hiking. I was wearing this shivering. Like I was wearing this and another buff. Um, yeah, it was cold. Um, and I get cold easily. All right. So that's buffs. I'm trying to go through accessories first. Um, highly recommend these. These are enlightened equipment down booties. So these are filled with down. They go over your socks at night when it's cold out and you're sleeping. Um, I would put my booties and then a layer of um, hand warmers and then my socked, socked feet, <laughs> my feet with socks on. <laughs> um, and it made like a nice little toasty oven with that hand warmer in there and it was amazing and I loved it. So my feet stayed warm all winter long and love these things. And they're super lightweight and they scrunch up really small and don't take up any room in your pack. Okay, and last thing on accessories, gloves. <laughs> Y'all are gonna laugh at me. When I did my gear video before I got on trail, people were like, you're seriously bringing three pairs of gloves? Well, in the beginning, yes. I tested everything before I got on trail and each of these pairs of gloves have a purpose. So. I thought in the beginning I was just going to bring merino wool gloves. These are smart wool, merino wool gloves. They're nice. I like them. But when they get wet, they do not keep your hands warm at all, at least for me. And they take forever to dry. So um, these were my, like, along with my, like, 250 merino wool layers that I slept in, these were my keep dry at all costs. These are my camp gloves to keep my hands warm at night and in the morning. I did not wear these hiking. Um, I'll flip that and I will say that in the summertime, I still have these with me. And if my hands got cold, uh, like if it had been raining and my hands were getting cold because they've been wet and cold for like hours or whatever, I would put these on and allow them to get damp or whatever. Um, but that was like a different rule for summer versus winter where, you know, you can get like frostbite and hypothermia and stuff. So um, little edit to that rule. And these were with me, Georgia to Maine. These were not, these were both sent back um, after um, winter. So this was the combination that I wore for actual hiking in the winter. Um, these are black diamond gloves. I actually got these in Colorado. Um, with fingers and they have the little tips on them so that you can touch your phone and stuff with them. And sometimes I wore just these alone. Um, they are lined, um, but they are not waterproof. They're water resistant. Okay. Reality, nothing is waterproof, right? Um, but they, they really do get wet pretty easily. Um, so when it was raining, I had this layer, which I did keep these layer for um, a little bit into the summer as well. Sometimes I wore them just these without the merino wool. Um, then I just kept the merino wool. So these together kept my hands warm and dry, and I never really had huge problems with uh, my fingers or hands being wet, cold, never thought I was gonna get hypothermia, anything like that on the trail. Oh, and these are the Mont Bell brand, and I didn't show you what they do. They flip back. I'm just gonna put it on real quick. They flip back so that your fingers are exposed. So voila. So if you're not wearing any gloves, you got fingers that you can you know, do things with. You can talk and text on your phone or grab things, manipulate your little poles when you're trying to pack up your camp or whatever. So occasionally I wore these without anything under them. Um, spring, summer, uh, send them home eventually and just use my merino wool gloves whenever my hands got cold in the summer then. Uh, but great combination in the winter, these two. Okay, that's all the accessories. Clothes. <laughs> Here we go where y'all are going to be like, you cray cray. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start with clothes that stayed with me the entire trail. Georgia to Maine. Um, I have this wonderful hiking shirt that I love. Um, your classic button up Columbia, actually this is Columbia brand style shirt that has the little, you know, air fly in the back for ventilation. It's got, this is my favorite feature of it. The sleeves roll up. So they're like three quarter length or long sleeve. It dries so fast, uh, whether it's sweat or rain or whatever, um, it dries really fast and um, it does keep me, you know, warm when it needs to, but, but it's light enough weight that it's not like super hot in spring or, or a chilly day in the summer or something like that. So this stayed with me, Georgia to Maine. I wore it a lot in the beginning, uh, winter, spring and into summer. Um, summer, most of the time I wore tank tops. And then when we got back into um, higher elevations in New Hampshire and Maine, broke this bad boy back out again. So that did stay with me. I also wore it a few times around camp in the summertime. It was a little bit chillier in the evenings. Um, and these are my favorite. These are North Face brand. Um, Aphrodite is the style name of these pants. Um, they're hiking pants. My only two, actually two 
drawbacks to this that I wish they would change about these pants, but otherwise I love them, are um, it doesn't have a side pocket. It does have, they do have hip pockets, but they're, they don't, like you can't really put anything in them. It's gonna, anything you put in them is gonna fall out. Um, and then the back pocket zips, which was great until the zipper broke. And then nothing would stay in the back pocket either. So I uh, wish I had a side pocket and they do run a little on the short side. Like I'm short and I still kind of look like I'm wearing like clam diggers. That's an old fashioned phrase, I guess. But yeah, like they, they just need to be a little bit longer. Um, but they are super lightweight. They dry really fast. I swam in these. I mean, it, everything. I, I wore these more than anything else. Georgia Domain. These were my hiking pants of choice. Um, last but not least, I have a very simple pair of yoga pants that I bought at TJ Maxx that have a thin lining of fleece in them, but they help keep me warm in the wintertime. And they have side pockets that I love because I can put my phone in my side pockets. And I wore these as my hiking pants in the, in the winter months. In the summer months, these were my um, chilly night sleep pants. Um, and then I did actually break them out and wear them hiking again when it got colder a little bit in New Hampshire. And it was hot in Maine, but at the end of Maine, it got chilly again and warm again there. Actually, did I wear these on Katahdin? No, or were the other ones on Katahdin? <laughs> <laughs> the North Face ones over on Katahdin. Um, yeah, so these stayed with me the whole time and they went back and forth between hiking pants and sleepwear in the summertime then. All right, winter. These were only with me um, the first 800 miles of the hike. I sent all of this home, well, except for one thing that's in here, um, and switched it out with my summer gear, which is that pile. Um, so this was my mid layer. Wait, I'm gonna go back. Start with my base layer. <laughs> base layer. Merino 150 wool. This is, uh, I think this is an REI brand. Um, I had this with me the entire trail because this was my chilly summer evenings shirt. Um, so I, and I did actually hike in this a couple of times on chillier summer days as well, but hardly ever. This was mostly just worn around camp. Um, so I really loved, yeah, this is REI brand. I really loved that this held up really well until the end. <laughs> And now it is super holy. Like all of a sudden by like, I don't know, I think of Vermont, New Hampshire, like every time I pulled it out of the wash, it was like more holes, more holes. But I wore this a lot. Um, I wore this to hike almost daily. The first like probably 600 miles. This was my hiking shirt almost every day. Um, this and that blue shirt. I went back and forth between these two. Like those are my hiking. Those are my, like, I had two sets of hiking clothes, one or the other. And I loved I loved hiking in my merino wool shirt. Kept it with the summer switch out because it became my summer night shirt to sleep in or just wear around camp if it was chilly. And there were, we had some, we had a couple of nights in June where it got down into the forties. So just because it's June doesn't mean it's like, you know, 60, 70 degrees at night. So, um, okay. So mid layer, um, wore this quite a bit as well, especially mornings and evenings, um, hiking. Um, this was one of those that, I went back and forth on like I did sleep in it. Like I, I, I say the like don't hike in your sleepwear. Well, this is a mid layer. I would sleep in it and hike in it. I didn't sleep in it very often, but whatever. So uh, just simple fleece from North Face, um, fitted lady style. So it was it was closer to the body, keeping uh, temperature into the core. So these were my base layer. Now when I say like keep dry at all costs, have something warm and dry to change into. These were my sleep wear, keep dry, do not get wet. Um, these are 250 merino wool pants and 250 merino wool top, a uh, smart wool brand on the pants and REI brand on the top. Um, the other thing I like about the REI top is I like the zipper tops. Um, I don't know why I just do. <laughs> I don't really have a reason, but I like the zipper, zipper pole on that for some reason. So, um, these got me nice and warm at night. I loved having something warm and cozy to change into after being freezing all day. It was great. Uh, and last but not least sent these home. And honestly, this was something that I packed. That I only wore probably I can count on one hand. Um, these are they're hot pink, but these are 150 Merino wool bottoms base layer that I did wear underneath those North face hiking pants a couple of times. Um, I did that mainly when my fleece leggings were dirty or gross or whatever. Um, so then I could have warmer for the winter when it was chilly with the North face ones or like in the Smokies when it was freezing and I had like three layers of pants on. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, those I really only wore a handful of times and probably could have done without, to be perfectly honest. But when I had them, I was glad that I had them. So there's that. Okay, summer switch out. So a couple of these I actually ended up sending back even in the summer because I just wasn't using them and they were taking up space in my bag. Um, one of these, one of them was this. These are Columbia brand hiking shorts or skort really. It's got the little connected, what's this called? Short skort thing in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, this was to be my camp outfit. Well, there's freaking poison ivy everywhere. <laughs> so I didn't change into these until I was not leaving my tent again. So I really was just sleeping in these. And then I was like, just being real. In the summertime, when it got warm enough, like I was just sleeping in my underwear. So I really wasn't even wearing them. I didn't hike in them. I wasn't wearing them around camp and I wasn't even sleeping in them anymore. So I set them back at some point. Um, yeah, but that was something that was with me at one point. So it's in the video. Um, these were my summer hiking pants and um, alternated between my North Face and these for my hiking pants and kept my fleece ones for um, chilly nights. Um, Honestly, probably, probably could have done. No, I used, I, I, I wore these too much. I, I did wear these a lot. So these are just my favorite hiking summer pants. Um, they stop mid calf and have pockets on the side and are lighter weight and dry really, really fast. So who's that? Um, tank tops. Okay. So I had three tank tops with me at one point and was like, why do I have three tank tops? And I realized why I had three tank tops. When my friend brought me my summer gear, I had packed two tank tops for hiking. Um, but before it got to the point where she was bringing me my summer gear, cause we had it planned. She came and she hiked with us for a little bit. Um, it got hot. Like there was a major heat wave hitting Virginia and everything I had was just too heavy and I was dying. So I went to a store and bought a tank top. So I had this when she already came to me. So I have, this as a, what's the brand? Solomon? Is that the brand? Yeah. Um, it's got like the little tiny little holes in it so it's ventilated and actually I saw a couple other people wearing this same top on trail um racerback I like racerback style um so this and then this top became my two sets of hiking tank tops um and both of these I could rinse out um to try to get some of the sweat and dirt and gunk off and they would dry really quickly um so I kept both of these um I ended up sending some back I kept this all the way to the end. Actually, I'm wearing this in my Katahdin pictures. Um, this is my favorite tank top. I've worn it for hiking for like years and I can't believe it's actually not completely destroyed after the trail. Starting to get that way. Um, but it's just, it's a simple racerback style crisscrossing. Um, it's just, it's comfortable and it dries super fast and I like it. So <laughs> uh, I got it at TJ Maxx. I don't even know what brand it is. I've just had it for years. And then this that I had sent to me, um, I was wearing as a um, night shirt, basically. I was sleeping in it and wearing it around camp and wearing it um, like on laundry days. So it was nice to have another shirt to actually wear on laundry days because those would be dirty and you'd be in the laundry. But eventually I sent this home too. Um, I sent that home when I sent the shorts home and like some other random stuff. And last but not least for the summer, um, I wanted something long sleeves that I could wear um, as a layer. This is a very, very lightweight. Um, it's that like, oh, I can't think of what it's called. Dry fit uh, material. Um, I got this in Florida, um, at, like a sporting goods store years ago. And it's just, it's really comfortable and I love it. And it's got, got the little thingies that you hook your thumb through. So it goes over your hand and your thumb's showing. Um, so I just wanted this for like chilly mornings in the summer and um, evenings. And I actually did wear this a lot. Um, and it was really easy to just take off and tie around my waist and then put back on. Um, Cause there are a lot of times like in the summertime you're hiking and you're hot. And if it's not one of these like 95 degree sweaty, nasty days, um, when you stop hiking, it's just like winter where you stop hiking and your sweat's drying on you and you get cold really fast and you don't want to get cold really fast. So I would have this to throw back on really quick and easy. Um, and then I still had my merino wool that wouldn't be sweaty if I needed something warmer actually at camp to put on because this might be sweaty at the end of the day. So um, again, maybe I had too many clothes, but that's what I had. <laughs> uh, socks, let's talk about socks. Let's talk about socks. Okay, yeah. All right, so I am a huge Injinji fan. Before Injinjis were born, I was covered in blisters and I hiked anyway in pain. Um, so I started the trail with Injinji liners and darn tufts. I did not end the trail with that. Um, 
Injinji now has their own actual hiking socks. They're thicker and have merino wool in them and have, you know, your little toe sock. And um, they have them in calf length, which I prefer. Um, and then they also have them in like your ankle length, which I don't prefer as much, but I needed a pair and that was what they had. Um, and this is, these two socks are the ones that I alternated for hiking most of the rest of the trail. Uh, the reason is because the liners, just being honest, they wear very, very quickly when you're through hiking. Um, I was buying new liners like every 200, 300 miles and it was ridiculous because they're expensive. Um, and then also, um, my darn tufts, uh, I sent back the ones, the pair that I actually brought, I sent back, um, because they, um, they were the compression type. And when I bought them, I thought that was a good thing. Um, that's not a good thing for my feet to be compressed when I'm hiking 20 miles a day, day after day. Um, they need room to expand and my feet were, part of the reason my feet were hurting was because of the compression. Um, so I went to just the Injinjis and then also I, I bought a different pair of, uh, darn tufts, which I don't have out, um, that are not compression. Um, so I did have the darn tufts with liners until about Vermont when my last liners gave out. And then I just went with these style to the end. Um, I also think it's very important to have one pair of socks that are your nighttime socks and you never hike in them just like your sleep clothes. So these were my best purchase on trail. Um, I started the trail with just a regular pair of socks that were my nighttime socks. Um, about 700 miles in um, Daleville, Virginia after uh, the Triple Crown. Um, my feet were killing me from plantar fasciitis and I was at a wonderful outfitter in Daleville and they recommended getting these relief socks. The brand is FS4 and these are specific OS first. These are specific to helping plantar fasciitis. And let me tell you, when I put these on at the end of the day, it was like my feet were being hugged. They have like compression bands in all the right places. It helps with the blood flow. It helps with the swelling. Um, it just these were the best $25 I spent on trail. Like I, I, I wore these socks for three straight. I mean, it's been almost a month since I finished my hike. I wore these for three straight weeks after I finished my three, three hike. Like I lived in them. So best purchase, highly recommend if you have plantar fasciitis, get those socks. Um, ladies, we gotta cover the girls. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many girls I saw out on trail. Not okay. I can't hike like that, but just tanked up. Um, so this is so particular to every woman. It's like shoes. They're different for every person. Um, I went shopping for two days before I finally found a bra style that I liked. For me, this is the, um, Kalia brand, uh, Carrie Underwood's brand at, um, Dick Sporting Goods. Um, these clips I thought weren't going to bother me because I thought they were going to be low enough. And the weird thing is most of the time they didn't. And if they ever did, it was only my left one that bothered me this little clip. I really wanted something that didn't have any metal clips on it, but I went with that. The rest of it has no clips. It's all seams. It's seamless on the edges. They never frayed. Um, small clip in the back, so that didn't bother. My pack didn't ride up against it and bother my back, and they held up very well. Wash. I never put them in the dryer, um, and honestly, they really didn't smell that bad either, so I was pretty impressed by that because I was afraid I was going to have to go, go bra shopping halfway through again, <laughs> um, and I had two of them. Um, and yes, I did carry two of them the whole time. And, oh, almost forgot the undies. Ex officio brand undies. Um, had to replace them about midway through the hike. Had trouble finding them, but finally did. Um, really like these. They actually do help with odor. Um, gonna be real. Every girl I talked to did this too. All these miles that you're hiking like whatever pants you're wearing, like the seams eventually are going to start rubbing or whatever underwear you're wearing, the seams eventually are going to start rubbing. So you kind of have to alternate not only your pants, but like either bring two totally different styles of underwear or just don't wear them. And so most girls, when we were wearing like our yoga pants or tights, we just weren't wearing underwear with them because we had to switch it up because we were getting chafed otherwise. So yeah, there's that <laughs> nice little bit of information. Um, okay. And Seal skins. Recommend looking at my video on seal skins. I tested them before I went out there. Um, they are worth the money, worth the hype. They, I mean, if you're crossing a river in Maine and you're getting soaked, like your feet are going to get wet. Okay. So like, this is not for river crossings to keep your feet dry, but honestly in rain, I wore these a lot where at the end of the day, I took my socks off my, whatever socks I had on underneath them, my engine were damp. 
but my feet were mostly dry. I never had any, any struggle with even getting close to getting trench foot or any kind of like foot fungusy type thing from constantly having wet feet. And I wore my seal skins a lot. They also are a really nice warm layer when it's cold out. So that's clothes. I think I actually talked about all the clothes. Yeah, did it. All right. Thanks uh, for watching. Subscribe, like, all that jazz, and I will see y'all in the next video.